I'm Asit Sheikh. I'm an instrumentation and control engineer. Today, we learn about a very important aspect in relief valves. This is called as CDTP. This stands for Cold Differential Test Pressure, which is mentioned in API 520. And I'm sure after this video, you'll be very well versed with this concept. And this concept comes in almost every relief valve data sheets. Now, the strange thing is, even though this parameter is so important, very few engineers are aware of what this means. But note that this is a very important term in relief valves. Without this term, the relief valves would not operate at the desired pressure, which is one of the most hazardous things that can happen in a plant. We look into the concept of cold differential test pressure. We know that the basic working principle of relief valve is that we set a desired pressure and the relief valve must pop up at that time when the set pressure is achieved. This sounds so simple, but there are few intricacies in it. Let's try to dig deep into it. For example, the relief valve is set for a desired pressure on the test stand. But these conditions would be actually different from what is happening in the plant. So we need to compensate for this effect. you would be clear that CDTP basically compensates for those differences between the conditions in the test stand and the actual service conditions. So let us look into the API definition before we dig deep into this concept. CDTP in relief valve is the correction for actual service conditions of back pressure or temperature. And this is mentioned in API 520, a standard dedicated to relief valves. Now, we'll look into two interesting parameters that are part of CDTP. The two parameters that are part of CDTP are the first one being back pressure compensation which is very important and critical and the second one is temperature compensation these two terms are useful for cdtp calculation now we'll first look into the temperature part of it so imagine that the temperature where the relief valve has to operate is 80 degrees Celsius. And we know that at test stand, the temperature would be the ambient temperature conditions. So this difference in temperature leads to an effect where the pop up of relief valve will happen at a different pressure and this needs to be compensated. And I have noticed that this multiplying factor can make a huge difference in calculations. However, note that this magnitude of the correction factor depends also on the type of relief valve that we'll be selecting. So conventional, bellows or pilot would have different multiplier for temperature correction factors. Okay, so now the next question would be from where do you get this factor? So, we would now be looking at how can we actually extract this value for our calculations. This value comes from the vendor who manufactures relief valves. And from where would we get this value? This value, we get it from IOM, the vendor's installation operation manual. From there, we would get this value. But won't it be nice to get a practical example? Let's try to look into that. Here, I've taken an example of relief valves from Baker Hughes, a well-renowned company in relief valves. 
here's a typical example of how the temperature compensation table looks like so if you see it says that the set pressure multiplier for cold differential test pressure at ambient temperature so for example if you look in the first row it has temperature as 120 degrees celsius so your multiplier to the value of set pressure would would, would be set pressure multiplied by 1.003 so this is the place where you get the multiplier from so if you would see the multiplier it keeps on increasing as the temperature increases so at 450 degrees celsius at the last row you would notice that the multiplier is 1.041 so this is how we get the multiplying factor for our relief valve calculation now now we will look into the concept of back pressure which i find very interesting so let us look into it let's imagine this is our relief valve and this relief valve has a set pressure of 100 psig simple and the inlet pressure that the relief valve experiences is 100 psig so what would happen the relief valve would pop up sounds simple now let's add something called as back pressure into it this relief valve is actually flushing out in a closed system and the back pressure is 10 psig so when the inlet pressure would reach 100 psig would the relief valve pop up the answer is no the relief valve would pop up at a pressure of 110 psig why because it has to compensate for that back pressure effect of 10 psig this is a factor which is considered in cdtp so let's try to look into the formal definition of what cdp is so the back pressure that relief valve faces in a closed system would not be present during its testing in the shop and this needs to be compensated for in conventional relief valves please note that this factor is not applicable for pilot operated relief valves and bellow type relief valves and thus this would not be part of cd calculations for these two type of valves now would you like to have a real project example of how this works well in the description below you can get the link where I've tried to actually calculate CDTP for a valve. Maybe you might find that interesting. Let me know your comments and what you feel about this calculation. In case if you face issues, I'll be very happy to help. Also, if you are interested, I've also written an ebook on engineering standards. I felt that engineering standards must be known to every engineer and this book has almost 1500 plus downloads within the first two days of its release i think you might find this ebook useful so the link is given in the description below thank you